Thank you. Uh, Representative LaMalfa, you're recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members for allowing me to sit in on this hearing here, and Mr. Secretary and your colleagues for sometimes for new people on the block, you know, there's a context there, but hang in there. You're trying, I think. So um, when you look at uh, the map of America, especially the red and blue one, you see that much of America, most of it is very rural, not in population, but in its geography. And so we have many veterans that uh, live in those rural areas. And so a, m a big part of the Choice Act was to give some of them the opportunity to have a better opportunity to get to care they need that's proximate to them. I uh, take Northern California, for example. Now, when we see that um, uh, Ms. Kirkpatrick was talking about post office, for example, we see that in the Reading area, they're threatening to close a mail processing center. All mail in Northern California that's inland will go to Sacramento to an area that's probably the size of Illinois. So we know the mail is going to slow down. That's just one factor. We see that uh, uh, the facilities veterans need for specialty care are generally going to be in Sacramento or the Bay Area if they're going to go to a VA facility. Now we have great facilities in Chico, California and Redding, California that could do much of these same things. So let's say you live in Tule Lake, California, an area which uh, the federal government incentivized uh, World War II vets to settle after the war. And you're, you're a long ways from anywhere up there as far as that. So if maybe Wairika is the nearest by, nearby, well it has, my understanding, one doctor in a broom closet there or maybe you have to go to Medford, or maybe you have to go to Reno. All those are at least an hour and a half away with the geographical weather, other challenges for that veteran to go to. And when they get there, do they even have the facilities they need to do specialty care, such as uh, chemo or, or the more uh, difficult things to administer? So what we're looking at is that we're hearing that the interpretation by the VA is that Congress didn't write this wide enough or narrow enough, whatever it is, to define that the veterans have more choices. And so we're frustrated because this is the intent. It certainly wasn't the intent of the committee here or the, or the House for veterans to, that are within 40 miles of a facility, but there's no specialty care there that somehow like having an example in, we'll take Wairika, California, hey, there's a VA facility here. And so that means you're within now the VA web but you don't have any chance of getting what you need. You have to go to another VA one, VA one since you're within, as the crow flies, 40 miles. Now you're in that category of having to stay in VA. You have to, you have to go all the way to the Bay Area, which is five-hour drive for probably at the speed of which a veteran in their 80s may drive, or if they can get the shuttle bus at 4 a.m. So you see where we're going here is that the interpretation of what we're looking for is that I always think the tie should go to the veteran. They've served honorably and that uh, they're still being put through these hoops. I know there's still more time you need to get this opened up and get the cards out, but what can you, what can you tell me today, and going backwards just a little bit under the old law and under the new law, how, how often did the VA use that authority really to previously allow that veteran to go to that private uh, service that's nearby? Sure. Uh, a couple of, couple of comments, and then uh, Dr. Cookschmidt may have a thought or two to add. Uh, first of all, as I mentioned a couple of times in my opening statement, uh, at every turn, if, when we were interpreting uh, actions under the, under the law, we were looking to do the right thing for veterans and be the best stewards we could be of, of taxpayer resources. So we haven't seen the final numbers on fiscal year 14 appointments completed in the community, but I'm going to guess somewhere in the neighborhood of 18 million. 18 million appointments completed in the community, not in VA, that were referred out of VA into the community during fiscal year. Pardon 14. me, uh, and you said you're limited by six billion dollars in Correct. the budget to do that. Is that Correct. what you're saying? The real limitation is. Correct. Yes. And and so and so first of all, we're already referring an awful lot of veterans, including rural veterans, for care in their community. Secondly, as we look at the at the act, and if we look and try to understand the intent of Congress, and then we go talk with the Congressional Budget Office to learn how it was scored. Clearly, the legislation was scored based on 40 miles geodesic distance from the nearest VA medical center. As the crow flies, right? As the crow flies, that's right. We, we don't have a lot of crows that do anyway. So, so one of the things that we did is we were looking at this, trying to make the right decision here. So we says, okay, how, how can we evaluate the, the 
is there some way that we could afford to open the aperture here and interpret this differently? And so we took, for example, and I'll get Jim to help me with, with the, the numbers if he recalls it. So we took, for example, and says, okay, how many veterans have we got that live 40 miles from a level two medical facility? Still not a level one, still don't do everything at a, at a, at a medical center, at a level two medical center, but we do a lot of, of things, a lot of specialty care. And it was somewhere on well, the order. would be one of those, because we have a veteran that has to, that could go 15 miles and then we're getting way into time here, but 15 miles instead will be required to go 85 for 15 minutes, five days a week. So is level two include chemo? Because that's the kind of level thing two I would expect would include chemotherapy. And he'll correct me if I say something wrong. Okay, we're going to really have to come but, back. To the because what happens, what happens when you do that is, is you, you then open up about a fourth of your veteran population uh, for eligibility for that care. Round numbers, we're talking somewhere in the $30 billion range okay. I, to be able to fee all that care out to the I'm community. I'm going to have to stop here because of time again, but uh, I would like to confer with you on that because our, our uh, a stat we got is that 438 veterans in northern the north half of California, the stat would be is that they would be the ones available to be able to, be able to use this, uh, this card in this context here, which is not going to do anything to the backlog. So I'd like to clarify that with you at a, at a later date. And also just a moment on due process. We're talking about due process for employees that you can hardly touch. We've had a veteran where they came to his door, two agents, seized his DD-214, and they've cut off his benefits. He and his wife are in their 80s. They need this. And this document is somewhere now without a receipt. And also, they have not had their day in court. Meanwhile, their benefits are cut off. If they've been uh, accused of something, they have a right to at least have that day soon because their benefits are gone. Please, this, provi please provide me the veteran's name. Okay. This and, well, anyway, thank you. I appreciate the indulgence of the committee. Thank you. Member Reels.